Welcome to PowerboatOne.com. Got a call from a buddy that his jet boat was making a rattling noise. He thinks it's actually coming from the jet drive and not the engine. So we're going to pull the jet pump out and see if we can find out what that noise is. So to start, we're going to come in, we're going to take all the cables off, shift cable, trim cable, steering cable, we'll pull the rudder off, we'll pull the place diverter back, then we'll go in, we'll unbolt the transom assembly so we can get that back off so we can get into the pump to get those 14 bolts out, and then we can pull the pump out of the back of the boat. Okay, let's get started pulling these cables off so we can get on with the job. Okay, now that we've got the forward and reverse cable out, let's go ahead and pull off the cable seal at the transom assembly and get this cable pushed back through so it's not in our way. We've got a little split washer that's up inside here that sometimes this one can be a little difficult to get out being that it's down inside there. Okay, we've got the split washer out. It fought us a little bit, but it's out of there. Now we can take and push the cable back through the transom assembly. that out we're just going to set it up out out of the way there now let's move to the trim cable we'll pull the heim joint the nut and also all the little cable seals off these sometimes when these cable seals get old you can use a crescent wrench kind of put it up over the top of it and use it to help pry those cable seals off. Since the trim cable doesn't go through the transom assembly and it goes through a separate seal on the transom, we'll just let it hang off to the side. Now let's go in and get the steering cable off. Okay, we got the steering cable bolt out of there. Now we'll go up and undo the steering tube nut on the inside, and then we'll be able to push the whole steering tube back. When you get a Berkeley rebuild kit, it's going to have new grommets and all that, so we'll be able to change them at that time. There's our steering tube nut. You can see on the steering tube nut where it has this cut relief into it. That always goes towards the rubber grommet so that when you tighten the two nuts up, the rubber grommet will actually swell up and create a seal to the transom assembly. Now let's give the steering cable a push. Now it's out and we'll just set it down in there. This is why you get a new steering tube bushing whenever you do a rebuild or take the pump apart. This one's pretty well shot. See where it would have been leaking in all these spots. Start off as a piece of tube about this long and that's what those little grooves in the nut actually do where that sits right inside like that. Same there you can see it where it actually will squeeze that up to create the seal to the transom assembly. Now we're going to go in and we'll pull the place diverter off. We'll pull these there's a bolt on the top to get the top pin out, and there's also one on the bottom to get the bottom pin out. And we've got two bolts on this outside of this section to be able to drop the rudder down so we can get that off. So we'll pull these two bolts out and those two pins. Okay, those are the rudder saddle bolts are out. Now we'll come in and pull the pin bolt out. Let's 
So we may be able to just push the rudder down. And there's the rudder off bottom pin. And we'll do the same thing on the top. Top pin out. Sometimes you can reach up inside the nozzle. Yep, this one we're not going to be able to. Sometimes you can just push the pin down. If it's got a lot of corrosion, you may have to use something to tap it down. There's the nozzle off. There's the top pin. You can see in here where this bottom nylon liner has really taken a lot of abuse. And it's actually started to groove into the nozzle housing right here. So we'll make sure that we put on new eyeliners when we put all this back together those are pretty well whooped up okay now that we've got the nozzle assembly removed all the cables out of the way gives us a little bit more room to get inside to get to the transom assembly swim steps sometimes can make this a little more difficult than without a swim step but we're gonna get in there and get it done anyway sometimes the screws on the bottom are either screws that go directly into the wood or they can actually be through bolts you can see why transoms will sometimes rot out because the screw went all the way through and just puts water right into the wood down here. We got that dripping out right now. The screws that hold the transom assembly on normally go through the transom and on the inside they'll have washers and nuts on them. So it may require two people to get this done to where you have to hold the screw on the outside and then remove the nut on the inside. We're going to go in with a little 12 volt ratchet and see if we can just pop them off without holding them on the outside. Sometimes that works because the silicone still may be sealing the screw on the outside. Let's give it a shot. So we'll give these screws a little tap, get them moved back. Okay, let's go in and just pull the screws out now. You can see they actually did a good job when they put this together. They had silicone on the countersink of the screw so that no water was going to be leaking in. Now we've got all the screws out of the transom assembly. Sometimes this is the tricky part where you got to get in and cut silicone out if they've actually siliconed it, you know, around the bowl to the transom assembly as well as to the transom from the flat plate of the transom assembly. Normally you're using a gasket on that and there's an O-ring, so it's not quite as difficult. This one has silicone in it, so we're gonna take a razor knife and cut the silicone around the bowl and then probably take a little putty knife and tap it behind the transom assembly to try to get that broke free. Okay, when you're tapping up underneath here, you kinda wanna be a little careful of the gel coat. You can hear it starting to pop free. You also can take a screwdriver once you get it opened up a little bit. Okay, looks like we're starting to get this to be pretty well broke free. There we go. Sometimes giving it a little twist helps. Just gotta work them a little bit to get them to, to do what you want. There's where the twist worked. There we go. You can see on this where they didn't use the actual transom gasket on this. It was just straight silicone to the back of the boat to create the seal. So I always like to use the transom gasket if possible because it does make it a little easier to get it back apart later. Okay, now that we've got everything off the outside of the boat, we're gonna get in. There's 14 bolts that hold the pump down to the intake assembly. So we'll remove those 14 bolts and be able to pull the pump out. One thing you wanna check is make sure what type of engine mount you have. This one has a four point mount, which means it's mounted off four corners of the engine to the stringer. So we don't have to worry about the engine at all. It's gonna stay stable. But if you have a three point engine mount, that's where the bell housing comes back and sets on the bearing cap of the jet drive, then you'll have to either lift the motor up in the back or block it in the back to get it to stay in place. You 
You're going to want to remember to disconnect the water hose also from the jet drive into the engine. This particular one has just a garden hose connection, so it's just a matter of undoing that connection. We may have to pull the valve off as well, but I think we can probably lift the pump up, twist it a little bit, and pull it back to get it out of the way. The drive shaft is just a slip yoke, kind of like in a car. So when we get ready to pull the pump back, it'll just slip right off of this drive shaft assembly. Now that we've got all the bolts out of the pump, should be able to just to kind of lift up on this, give it a little jerk, and it should pop it free from the gasket. And then that'll be able to let us pull the pump out of the back of the boat. Worked out really pretty easy in this case. It came right off the flange. Now we just need to wiggle it off of the drive shaft assembly. This one also has a loader in it, so the loader's kind of hanging up on the pump a little bit. Okay, we've got our pump loose now. Now it's just a matter of getting it out the back of the boat. There we go. Okay, now that we got it out, let's just pull the handhold cover off of it. See if we can see what maybe is rattling inside. I'm thinking it's possibly the wear ring come loose. Maybe it sucked the insulator out. Now we got the handhold cover off and spinning the shaft. You can kind of hear the wear ring rattling around there. Looks like what happened is that it's pulled the insulator out. And uh, so the wear ring is no longer held in place, which that's just no bueno. Now that we know what the problem is, we're going to get this up on the bench, get it apart, and get it taken care of. Keep following this project on PowerBoat1.com.